Have you ever looked at any masterpiece of a game and thought how it was created? Chances are that just like me you did, but that was the end of the curiosity, because to find out more you actually need to put in some serious work. But fear not, for there is a reason I am here. I will struggle by myself to find out just how hard can it be to create a game engine from scratch and offer you the knowledge I gather along the way. The most fun part about all of this is, is that I don't know what I'm doing. Yet. If you're familiar with game development, you've likely heard of things called game engines. And it's no big secret that most games nowadays are made with the game engines, such as Unreal, Unity, Godot, or with engines made by the companies themselves. Explain plain and simple. Just how a powerful engine makes a car go faster, a game engine allows developing games faster. Over the years, game engines have become quite high level, meaning that you could have little or no understanding of graphics or physics and you could still create a game with it, but that's only because someone else does that understanding for you. I like understanding how things work, so I want to create my own game engine. But the question is how do I make one? Hmm, good question. We could start by looking into what a game engine actually does. Just have in mind that in this video I will not be going much into depth about each topic and this video will be more of an introduction of what kind of atrocity we're dealing with here. Game engines offer things like graphics, sound, physics, scripting, animations and much much more. Now the most important part for a game engine is graphics. Because without it, well, for the most part there would be no games. So it will be the main topic for this video as a short introduction of what's about to come. For this video I set myself a graphics related goal, to render a cube on the screen. Chances are you heard of graphics APIs with names like OpenGL, DirectX, Vulkan… Well these are the things that allow you to make this go to this. For my engine, I will be using DirectX 11, which was developed by Bill G I mean Microsoft. The main reason why I chose DirectX 11 is because apparently it's beginner friendly, but don't take my word for it. Oh and I forgot to mention, I made a github repository that will be accessible to anyone, so feel free to use it for whatever reasons you might need. I will be making the engine in C++, which I also have no real understanding of, so this is bound to be fun. I originally started learning from a project called LearnD3D11, which I will link in the description, but I immediately ran into some problems. The libraries that were required to create Windows, DirectX itself, image loading libraries, etc. did not work as expected for me, so after 10 hours of enjoyment, I ended up manually building the headers, libraries, DLLs and importing them into the project. Fortunately, the work was not entirely in vain since this also means that anyone who clones the project can just run it instantly without the need of installing anything on their computer. I won't go into specifics about the problems with libraries and they probably could have been avoided using something fancy like a package manager, but I digress. Surprisingly, the basic idea for graphics seems relatively simple. You just need to draw three-dimensional things on a two-dimensional screen. But also not surprisingly, that's where the simple part ends. To display anything on the screen, we first need a window to display it on. Windows does provide its own tools that you could use to create a window. But, for simplicity's sake, I chose to use a well-known library called Graphics Library Framework. Having created the window, it's time to dip one foot into graphics. The most basic task in graphics programming is to draw a triangle, but that's boring, and that is the reason I chose to go with the cube. <laughs> Everything in computer graphics is drawn using shapes called polygons, which normal people call triangles. You can draw a rectangle by combining two triangles, a hexagon combining six triangles, and in this manner every piece of geometry can be generated. I believe it would not be hard to imagine how a cube could be made from triangles. To actually draw something, we first need to know how the graphics pipeline for DirectX 11 functions. Yeah. I'm going to be honest, I don't know what the hell I'm looking at, so I will instead just focus on the parts I do understand. The main things that are of concern for us now are the memory resources, since to draw something we first need to load it into GPU memory, a vertex shader program that is executed for each vertex of the triangles we talked about, 
and the pixel shader program that is executed for each pixel on the window. Commonly this is used to set colors. We also need to set up things such as camera and depth buffers, but apart from mentioning them, I won't go more into detail in this video. After some diligent copying and pasting, I managed to get the cube on the screen. And by this point you should have realized that I spent more than 15 hours to render a single shadowless cube on the screen. For comparison, let's look at how a cube would be created in a modern game engine. Nah, mine is definitely better. This video was a short introduction and I skipped many important parts that will be covered in the next episodes. So let's call this an episode zero, if you will. It was the first time I made a video like this and it was pretty fun, I have to say. Hopefully you learned something new. Bye.